So you two, team, keep it clean. Good morning. How's your morning? I hope it's going really good. Uh, mine started off by having to clean up some pee and poop in the kitchen. It wasn't from me, though. It was from Pookie. Uh, the newest addition to the family. She's golden retriever mixed with golden doodle. And she is a lot of fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. So shout out to Pookie for, uh, for changing our lives over the past two days. And we know that she will continue to do that in the foreseeable future. Uh, so she is now part of Team Keep It Clean, even though she has not been keeping it so clean. Uh, but we'll work on that. She'll get it eventually. Uh, but anyway, Team Keep It Clean, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, and you know what? Let's just get straight into it. Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. It's what it is. Yeah, we talking sports. Shout out to Graven Vans. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team, keep it clean. <laughs> What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And before we get into this, I love y'all. I really love y'all and I really appreciate y'all. Thank you. For everything that you do for this channel thank you for everything that you do for other people more importantly i appreciate it they appreciate it we appreciate it now yesterday yesterday was a very um interesting day for the baltimore ravens because they announced their e-gaming league and they also announced of course the contract extension uh with gus edwards um and that actually that contract extension that keeps him in baltimore contractually for the next three years because he's on the tender this year and then he has the following year and the year after that uh, that he signed to the extension through. So he's right on pace with J.K. Dobbins and this is something that we talked about. We hope that would happen last year that they will sign him to an extension and both of their contracts will run out at the same time and then there will be some decisions to make. But regardless, they'll cross, cross that road when they get there. But the move yesterday that had a lot of people confused, had a lot of people scratching their heads, especially me, was the Jawan James signing. I was thinking, like, why would the Ravens sign Jawan James? Why would they do it now when they could have done it later? For, for what? That was one of my first questions, but that's why I love Team Keep It Clean so much because y'all made it make sense. I forgot who it was, but somebody pointed out specifically, they said with Jawan James, one of the reasons why the Ravens could have signed him now as opposed to waiting till later so they don't have to get into a bidding war. There's no competition from anybody else right now, so the Ravens don't have to continue to raise their prices and raise the offer to Jawan James. It's just them alone. And from that by itself, that comment, I was like, oh, wow, that just makes so much sense. And then somebody else in the comment section was like, oh, another benefit of this thing is Jawan James, he gets to rehab directly with the Ravens. And while he's rehabbing with the Ravens, he gets to learn the playbook. So and we don't expect him to play this year. But next year, when he does come back, it'll be like, it's not going to be like he's a brand new free agent or anything like that. No, he is going to be, have been invested in that playbook. Well, hopefully, but he will know a lot of the terminology, a lot of the ins and outs of the Baltimore Ravens starting from now. So he'll have a full year to really take all of that in. So that's another benefit of this whole thing. And then, like I mentioned in the video yesterday, Alejandro Villanueva, his contract is pretty much a one year deal. They can keep him next year, too, but it's pretty much a one-year deal. All the guarantees are this year. So if they decide to move on, hey, no problem. Now, one thing that I questioned yesterday is which I didn't, well, why I didn't get overly excited or anxious or angry or upset with the move is because I wanted to see what the guaranteed money is. What, what are the salaries for uh, Jawan James? Now, this year, of course, he gets the $500,000 uh, signing bonus, so that is his. But his cap hit would only be $250,000. So, very, very minimal. And it was said that if he does play this year, he's not expected to play this year, but if he does play this year, but he's not expected to, he would get the vet minimum. So, Ravens this year, they like, hey, if he does play cool and he's on the roster, cool, but it ain't going to be for that much money. Now, next year, that's where the big question came in. Well, next year, because his contract is worth up to eight or nine mil. But like we always say, it's not about what it's worth up to. It's about what the guarantees are. And his salary next year would actually be 3.25 mil. So you get a starting caliber right tackle who this year is, is a wash. We know that this year is going to be a wash. But next year, you get a starting caliber right tackle for 3.25 mil. So that just that, that made it made. That made it make a lot more sense for me uh, and just for all of us, too, uh, because the, the move it caught everybody way off guard, especially me. But this makes it make sense. And then another thing, too, 
The Ravens actually uh, opened up about $884,000 in cap space with those two moves because with Gus Edwards' extension, that opened up some cap space. Uh, and then with, uh, with Juwan James' deal, that took away a little bit of cap space. Not too much now, but it took away a little bit. So in whole, it opened up $884,000 thousand dollars in cap space not significant by any means but still it didn't hurt anything so it doesn't have any bearing on a possible justin houston signing because i know every like like every ravens fan is waiting for that um but it doesn't change anything that that has to do with um now speaking of possible raven signings and what a lot of ravens fans are thinking shout out to my guy rodell because he sent this in yesterday he said my guy good afternoon i think i finally understand the ravens and how they think the Juwan james notification just came through my phone and i immediately am heartbroken on one hand this could be a great signing for this cheap uh or it, especially if he can get healthy and produce but on the other hand the only notification i should have been receiving regarding our ravens is you know who leo I like that. It's like kind of like a little dad joke. Anyway, he said, man, oh, man, for as cheap as Tennessee got him, you got to wonder, will we ever in life have a top 10 generational MVP type wide receiver on this Baltimore Ravens roster? Now, we know EDC has been a lot more aggressive than Ozzy, but how good are your attempts if you aren't converting? Yes, this James move is another rare offensive signing, but you have a chance to hit your wide receiver room with a steroid shot and you miss. I see we continue to sign at least 8 to 10 undrafted and unknown guys for camp every year, but that's not the answer. Even if they produce in camp, they never get opportunity to play. As I said, this James signing could be a historic signing if all goes well, but man oh man how much more wide receiver trade signings are going to fly past the Ravens. I appreciate Sammy, I appreciate Bateman, I appreciate Tylen Wallace, but we have to be more aggressive when Nuke and Julio are getting traded. And that is very, very significant, and I, I understand where he's coming from. I really do. Um, Y'all know I was on board with Julio to the Ravens all day, all day. Um, I didn't expect it to happen. That's why when Tennessee officially got him, I, I just left. I just left. Um, but I was hoping, I was hoping that the Ravens uh, would make the move. Now, the one thing with this move, the Julio to the Titans, is, is that it hurts less than it normally would. I think it hurts less than it normally would is because we've, we heard stuff along the way. We heard stuff about the Ravens along the way, and we heard stuff about the Titans along the way and these other teams as well. So that helped it sting less. So actually, for me, it actually didn't sting at all. Because it was like, okay, Julio ain't coming here. All right, no, no surprise. All right, cool. But like with the DeAndre Hopkins, with that one, the reason why that one hurts so bad is because me personally, that's my favorite receiver. I think he's the best in the game. The best. Julio is right up there too, but I think DeAndre Hopkins is the best uh, because of his health. That puts him over Julio for me. Julio is right there too now. You, you can't go wrong with either one. But anyway, I think that one hurt so much is because we didn't hear about it until after the fact. And we heard that the Ravens tried, but they came up short. And so the timing of us hearing it, that hurt. Now, an interesting tidbit from Albert Breer. He said in his article yet that he put out yesterday about this whole Julio Jones trade. He said that the Ravens discussed the Jones trade with the Falcons prior to the draft, but pulled out of the running after taking Rashad Bateman in the first round and never got back in. The Patriots never showed real interest to Atlanta and Jones and the Raiders, perhaps for cash reasons, weren't in it either. So he let it be known that the Ravens, as soon as they got Rashad Bateman, they were like, we are done. We're out. It's finished. Done. Finito. That's a wrap. We ain't, we ain't a part of this anymore. And we had heard all these conflicting reports. Some said the Ravens were in. Some said the Ravens were out. Some said the Ravens were in. Some said they were out. It was, and I told y'all it was like a tennis matchup. And with it being like a tennis matchup, we just, it was like, like I continue to say throughout all them videos, we'll see what happens when it does finally happen. And if it, of course, finally happened. And it was like a big relief, like, okay, well, it's done now. I knew what my expectations were. I'm sure a lot of y'all had your own expectations uh, as well. But Julio is <laughs> officially, uh, he's out of there. He's out of there. Now, uh, another question that came in yesterday came from my guy, uh, Denal. And this one is about choo-choo. Anyway, let's get into it. He said, hey, Engraven, what's up? I'm on a late night uh, watching a video about Gus, the mighty rapping bus. <laughs> you made an interesting point that I caught. Subtraction over addition. Well, I said uh, addition by subtraction. Uh, but he said, running with the hot hand. Right. So we already know who the hot hands are in Gusta Bus and JK. 
correct. Uh, and I'm not joking. Oh, okay, I like that. Okay, I, I, y'all bringing these dad jokes today, and I'm with the dad jokes all day. Anyway, he said, um, I believe Gus had 800 yards rushing. Again, on top of that, wasn't JK ahead in yards with like 900 or something? Yeah, it was like some crazy amount for JK, and he only like really started like eight, nine games. Anyway, uh, he, he said, my point is we know who the hot hands are, so what do you think will happen with Justice Hill? I don't care about special teams right now because the Ravens aren't keeping three running backs and three quarterbacks bad enough is two fullbacks. But I can imagine Justin J.K. always making headlines because those two are a problem once either one of them get going. Enjoy this question, uh, and I'll be coming with more. Appreciate it, man. Um, I mean, I know you said you didn't care about it, but that's what Justice Hill's role is right now. That's his primary role to be a special teamer. And I do think um, if they're just going to roll with Gus Edwards, J.K., and Justice Hill as the running backs— then, yeah, they're definitely going to keep – they're not just going to roll with two running backs. It may just – some. no, nah, it won't even just be two running backs active on game day. They're going to roll with three running backs at least and have all three active on game day because you ha special teams are so important. It is so important. Like I said, I know you say you don't care about it, but it is very a very important part of the game. Justice Hill is, is a gunner. Justice Hill is a returner. Justice Hill is also a backup running back. So he can fill a lot, a lot of different roles for the team that a lot, a lot of it may go unnoticed – but it's very, very important. So with Justice Hill, he ain't going anywhere and he ain't doing anything differently. Now, somebody who a lot of people want to do different things is Miles Boykin. And uh, my guy, Chef Life, he sent a question on Miles Boykin. He said, what's up, Engraving? Long time since I did a question, but always watch the videos. Appreciate it. I treat your page like NFL updates. I'm going to need them to cut you a check. <laughs> well, hey, I, I would like that. Um, but my question today is, with the Ravens not getting Julio, and with Miles having a pretty good start to OTAs in the offseason, do you think the Ravens are all in and confident on Miles Boykin being their big body target? Thanks again, brother. And I'll always keep, it's a pleasure and keep making the world better one day at a time. Oh, I, I appreciate that. I don't do that, though. Y'all do that. Y'all make the world better one day at a time. Um, with Boykin, it's to be determined. It's to be determined because everything is really going to show itself in the season. We, we cannot take anything about OTAs, training camp. Or we can't take that. Not that you can't take it seriously, but you, you can't take it too seriously because for the past couple of years, well, not last year because last year was just weird, but they said Miles Boykin is workout warrior, OTA beast, mini camp beast, training camp beast, all that good stuff. But then on the field, um, not that he's bad on the field, but on the field, it just him and Lamar weren't on the same page. Uh, and they just, he, he wasn't involved that much. So I, I, I can't just go off of the OTAs. Oh, yeah, Miles Boykin been performing well in OTAs. That's cool, and we appreciate that. I mean, we wouldn't want to hear otherwise. But for me... Like I always say, seeing is believing. So I'm not going to get all hyped over OTA. I'm not going to get all hyped over this and that when, I, when we hear reports about how players are doing in the camp and stuff. Let me see it on the field. I mean, it's, it starts there, though. So, again, that's a good start. But let's see uh, where it finishes because, to me, that's what's the most important. But we'll see how these things go, uh, and we'll see how they play out. Um, so shout out to <laughs> Jawan James. I know a lot of Ravens fans wanted somebody else that has two J's in their name. Jawan James, Julio Jones, but y'all get what I'm saying. Anyway, um, let's see how this thing continues to move, man. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Team Keep It Clean podcast is coming out tomorrow. Thank you. Um, y'all just stay up, man. Stay up. Keep being positive. Keep spreading positive vibes to people. And let somebody know that you love them. I love y'all. We out.